<laughs> oh, oh, look what you made me do. Like, this makes me think there's more to that theory of uh, her and Carly Kloss than I previously thought. That has to be one of my favourite songs ever. Hello, welcome to this video. My name's Dan, aka Lucen, and today... Today... Today, I'm finally going to be reacting to Reputation by Taylor Swift for the first time. Let's go. So, Swifties, hi. So here we are, finally, Reputation. I haven't ever heard Reputation. My Swifty conversion at this point is well documented, right? Um, you've watched me all this way. And if you haven't, then go back and check out my 88 other Taylor Swift videos. But I started last year having not really listened to Taylor Swift like properly in depth. I started with Folklore and then I went back and discovered all the old albums. And oh my God, here I am full Swifty. Now I'm listening for like Taylor Swift lyrics in like Harry Styles songs. That said, yeah, if you haven't checked out my other Taylor Swift reactions, then I'll put a link. A lot of people have told me that they reckon I'm gonna be a reputation stan, including my Swifty bestie. All I really know about reputation is like the media attention it got at the time. So it was very much that whole thing with Kim and Kanye. And it was very much the snakes. Hi. <laughs> And at the time, I think I kind of thought, to me, it looked like the whole album campaign was all about just trying to kind of spin the negative media attention into positive. But like, now I have so much more sympathy for her and what she went through. And I feel like I kind of understand her a lot more. So I'm excited to actually properly listen to this album and give it, give it the chance I should have given it. Before we get started quickly, if you like this video, then please give it a like, but also subscribe to the channel for more Taylor Swift reactions, but also all of my other reactions and my own music too. As a songwriter, I write my own music and I'd like you to check out my music if you want to. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video for my song of the week recommendation. Let's get into it. Ah, oh, reputation. Are you ready for it? I'm not ready for it. <laughs> Oh my god, this is so hype. So this is track number one. This is dot dot dot. Ready for it? Question mark. Oh, it's already gritty. Okay. This is so different. Oh, are you ready? Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. So it's like a future romance. She's like, in the middle of the night, I'm dreaming of this man. I hope that you're, in, you're going to be ready for it. It's kind of very self-referential, isn't it? Ooh. That's cool. She's kind of painting this kind of a bit of like a harder picture for herself. But then in the chorus, she kind of like strips that away. And it's a bit more like dream like Taylor. It's a bit of like both, you know, maybe it's a reflection of like who she's trying to be in the media or who she thinks she is in the media and the real her. And it's kind of like, are you ready for the real thing? This chorus is really good. I'm now I'm gonna be with you. She's still got that like romanticism, you know? I'm glad she hasn't lost that. Cool. That's a good opener as well, isn't it? Okay, so so far, very different. <laughs> yeah, like having come off of like Evermore, that's very gritty. So like the synth and everything is very kind of like distorted and like kind of paints this picture of this kind of like walls up, hard, like kind of spiky shelled person. But I think that in the chorus, she's kind of letting herself go and letting all of that go. And she's kind of saying to this future person, this is what you think you're getting, but are you ready for what you're actually gonna get? It's very self-referential, that idea that like everybody thinks of her as playing lots of games and she's kind of playing up to that. I think that's kind of where, maybe where the whole album's gonna kind of come from. Good song though, innit? I can imagine this one being really good live. Oh, oh my God, I'd love to see Taylor live. <laughs> In the rain. Um, oh, it's raining now, just saying. Let's go on to song number two. This is Endgame with Ed Sheeran and Future. Okay, this is about long lasting love then. Oh, reputation. Uh, oh, hello. Rapping on Taylor Swift, what's going on? Yeah, like the idea of the Endgame is like the last romance you're gonna have. I don't want to be another ex you don't want to see. Oh, I think having had all these failed relationships that have kind of been so high profile. Oh, hello. <laughs> She's kind of, yeah, look, like looking for something real. Oh, the four words. Yeah. Yeah, she's searching for real love at this point, I think. Something that's gonna last. 
can it last when we have such a reputation about us, you know? <laughs> There's the lips again! It's very much again like a comment on her like position in the industry and her position with the media and stuff. I think she must have been really like wrapped up in it when she wrote this album. She must have written it like quite soon after the Kim and Kanye drama. It's nice to know that like this past year with Folklore and with Evermore that she has managed to rise above it. I think. Whereas so far this feels like she's kind of very much in it, unable to kind of rise above it yet, you know? Let's go on to song number three. This is I Did Something Bad. So far feels like it's all very like thematic. I quite like that about it actually. I like an album that has an identity. Ooh. I never trust a narcissist. They love me. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> She feels, she sounds like she's kind of hurt. Whoa. Oh my God. Wow. It's so different. <laughs> Whoa, I like the gunshots. That's quite cool. Wow. God, the production is so mad. So she's kind of like talking about this like media thing about her being, you know, a crazy person. But she's kind of saying these people kind of had it coming. You know, they're playboys. I'm actually going to fight for myself for once. Some people may think I've been doing something bad, but actually I'm just looking out for myself. Yeah. So the production is so like in your face, isn't it? This is the thing, you know. Yeah, even if it's not true, they're still gonna come for you anyway. Cause there's sexism in the industry. Do it, I don't care. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> it's so big, isn't it? Oh my God, I bet that this music is sick live. I bet it just like completely like rips across the stadium. That would be amazing. Over again. Oh, oh. Cool. As a sentiment, like, she's really sticking up for herself. She's kind of saying, you know, everyone's got it out for me anyway because I'm a woman in this industry. So, you know what? Light me up. Set me on fire because you're going to do it anyway. And I'm just going to own it because I'm sick of saying sorry. I really like that attitude. It's really powerful. And it's really, I think Taylor needed to kind of go through this moment of, like, owning herself and owning her self-worth because otherwise she was always going to be playing second fiddle to all the like manipulative people, other people in the industry. And now looking back in the last year, like like with her like buying all of her rights back and actually redoing her own albums and everything, it really feels like she's living up to that now. I'm sticking up for myself. I'm going to do me. I'm master of my own legacy, you know? Good for you, Taylor. <laughs> okay, let's go on to song number four. This is Don't Blame Me. <laughs> yeah, love should make you crazy. Love is her drug. Oh. Yeah. She really would completely put herself out there for other people. Oh. Oh, I love that chord progression there. Yeah. It's so big, isn't it? Maximalism. She would really do anything for somebody. I would fall from grace just to touch your face. She's still that uber romantic at the center of it. Like, yeah, she's hurting. Yeah, she can kind of break all the hearts and have this like negative media attention. But the center of it, this is who she is. And she's not apologizing for it anymore. You know, this is so cool. Oh, <gasps> the production is sick on this. It's like proper stadium filler music, isn't it? It's so different from folklore and evermore, actually, isn't it? Sick. Like, oh my god, like, proper stadium filler. It feels like, at this point, she knows that she's huge, and the music is kind of matching that. But there's so much self-confidence in being able to kind of take your music to that place, because she's saying, you know, I am a big deal. And actually, you know, she's not apologising. It's kind of coming back to that, you know? Not apologising. It's really powerful, this album, actually. Powerful in, like, its scope and its grand kind of production, but also, like, in how she's standing up for herself as a woman in this industry. Yeah, really cool. <laughs> Are you ready? 
<laughs> Next up is song number five. Oh no, where are my tissues? I just used the snake. <laughs> if you've been watching this channel, then you'll know that, that I am a very sensitive person <laughs> and I'm unapologetic for it. If you haven't checked out my reaction to All Too Well, you should. Or maybe you shouldn't, it's too embarrassing. I just cry, I'd cry, my, I'd like weep. It is so bad. Like, <laughs> then we had White Horse, we had Dear John, and then on Evermore there was Tolerate It. Oh my God, what a nightmare. So here we go again. Delicate though, I feel like I might have heard it. Is there a music video where she's like dancing in the rain or something? Let's go on to song number five. This is Delicate. Right. You must like me for me. Oh. Huh. Oh my god, that's so sweet. Ah, oh. ah, oh. it's like a bit more intimate, isn't it? So she's met someone, but they've got to treat her well. You've really got to like me from who I am. Oh, I love this. Ah, oh. she's kind of being cautiously optimistic because she's been broken so many times before. It's really innocent, this romance so far, isn't it? Because I like you, it's at the beginning, you know. We can't make any promises, but you can make me a drink. Let's just start small. It's a really nice juxtaposition from the song so far. Much lighter. It still fits, but it feels like more of a delicate touch, you know. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> Oh, because she wants the real thing. She wants more. She's still hoping for it. Oh. <laughs> Who's this one about? You'll have to let me know in the comments. Is this about Joe yet? Oh, I love that. That's so good. Oh, what a good song. I'm going to add that to my playlist. So it's obviously at the beginning of some sort of romantic relationship. You have to let me know who it's about. But she's kind of tentative. I mean, she's coming from a place of having been, you know, heartbroken a lot of times about like her reputation. Yeah, like she says like, my reputations are the worst it's ever been. So you're going to have to like me for me. Given my past, given my history, you think you know all these things about me. But if this is actually going to work, then you need to actually like get to know who I am. And that's quite a delicate matter. She's still dreaming of more and she's still, still hoping that this is going to be the real thing, that this person's going to be the end game. But like, she's not sure anymore. Like she's lost a bit of her kind of brashness. And so this song is, is much more of like, it's yeah, it's kind of tentative. I think that she encapsulated that really well. Lovely. Oh my God, I love that. Song number six. I have a re <laughs> this is like what you made me do. Yes, I've heard this song before. <laughs> I remember really enjoying it when it came out, but like a lot of people were really critical of it because I think that like they were expecting Taylor to do something, you know, soft and delicate, lol. <laughs> and yet she came out with something that's like really harsh, really like a direct callback to the whole Kim and Kanye snake drama. And I think that like people aren't used to women speaking up for themselves. And I think that's honestly like where a lot of that kind of vitriol came from. But good on her, she did it. And she was like, you know what? I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, it's all these kind of lyrics kind of saying, you know, you pushed me into this situation and it's not cool. I check it once and I check it twice. Oh, oh, look what you made me do, made me do. Look what you just made me do, look what you just made me, oh. <laughs> I love that, it's so good. It's so good how it plays with the rhythm by adding in the just and it kind of puts it on the offbeat. It's just so clever. This is such a cool production as well. There's like so much stuff going on. It kind of reveals kind of the swirling of the situation and her mind and her anger. And a check it twice. You just made me, oh, look what you made me do. Look. Ah, <laughs> I pulled the cable out. I'm dancing too hard. I'll be the actress starring in your bad dream. That's so good. Oh, I love this bit. I can't come to the phone right now. Why? <laughs> Cause she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's like literally the best. Look what you just made me do. I fucking love that. I remember at the time people being like really like skeptical on that song, but that is ace. <laughs> I just love it. And it's got so much like 
verve. That's a good word, isn't it? Verve. And it's got so much confidence to it. It's really her just going, you know what? If you're gonna paint me in a really bad light and give me this reputation, so be it. I don't care. I'm rising above it. Personally, I just hate Kim, Kim and Kanye. I think they're very opportunistic. Obviously, they saw someone like Taylor Swift who's very successful and they pounced on her because they were like, we can make a big deal out of this and we can raise our profile again. They're just nasty. They'll just do anything for it. And it's like, the thing is that like, it's a professional matter. Like the whole thing about, you know, Taylor coming back and saying, you, no, you weren't allowed to use, like call me a bitch. I never actually gave you that permission to, to call me that in your song. And then having the receipts, like it's just so unprofessional to like post it online and, to, and, and then to then go and attack her online and send a whole bunch of people to then send her all these snake emojis and all this it must have been so like emotionally like damaging to someone like taylor especially now looking back we have the real proof it's like it was all just an angle and it's like playing with somebody's life for your own standing it's just so like despicable to be completely honest and actually like Taylor turning it around and making something out of it, I think shows her own business savvy, but she never names them. She never sent people to attack them. She just stuck up for herself. Yeah, I really respect her actually for doing that. And that's a good song. And that's my essay on um, Kim and Kanye Gossip Driver. <laughs> okay, so let's go on to the next song. This is song number seven. This is So It Goes. Oh, I love the background stuff there. Huh, my eyes on us. Oh. So she's back in love again. Ah. Ah. Oh my god. Ah. Oh, the lipstick's on his face now. It really feels like this person is like kind of saving her with this love. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so like in real life with the media attention, like we're breaking down, but when we're alone, it's simple. That's what you want it to be, you know, it's an escape. Love is an escape from the real world. <sighs> love it. I love it. And I love the references. <laughs> this is so good. Oh. She's still got her like typical kind of clever like little couplets of lines, you know. <gasps> yes! <laughs> oh my god! Oh, that's so sick. I just love how big it is, you know? It feels so passionate. This is the kind of music that I love to write, something that's like big and like accurately shows my, the level of my devotion and emotion for somebody. Oh. Wow. I loved that. I love that the production is so grand and so epic. We get all shades from Taylor, you know, we've had the small intimate love ballads and she's moving on. She's doing something different. And this is the stadium filler electronica pop. And I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe I'm a big reputation Sudan. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Oh man, uh, it's kind of a description of love, isn't it? And it's like, you know, we can kind of do whatever we want when we're in our little bubble, away from the media, away from the rest of the world. Everything's broken on the outside, but then in the chorus, it all, that all slots back into place, doesn't it? And it's like, when we're together, things make sense. Maybe she has met Joe already at this point. You have to let me know at which point she meets Joe. So I was told in a comment that she meets Joe partway through this album. We'll see. I'll have to make a prediction and then you can let me know if I'm right. You're so gorgeous. I know this one. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Okay. So song number eight is gorgeous. This must have been one of the singles, right? Oh. <laughs> oh, that's cute. It's those little moments again, those details. Oh, so she's dating someone at this point. Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. How am I supposed to be able to talk to you? I think this is the moment she's met Joe. Oh. <laughs> it's so funny because it's like the opposite of what you actually expect. But it's so true, isn't it? The blue eyes, that's got to be about Joe, right? Oh, I love this. I love this. Ah, oh, it's just so sweet, isn't it? <laughs> Relatable content. Ah, <laughs> oh, 
I love this. This is so good. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love that she's kind of managed to find that innocent love, that part of herself, you know, again. Oh. So it seems as if at this point, she is already with somebody, but he's like out somewhere. I don't know. So she's kind of gone out on her own and she's spotted this guy who's so gorgeous that she feels like she can't talk to him because like if she does then she's gonna fall into this like glorious beautiful feeling it's that line like if you have a girlfriend then you know then i'm jealous but if you don't then honestly that's worse because that means that i then have to like actively resist you um you know it's just so it's that really beautiful kind of relatable lyric that she writes that's like despite all of the drama and all the darkness and all the, the kind of anger that she's shown in the album so far she still at the center of it has that element that she had in all too well and that she had in in like all those all the beautiful songs that she's done so far and this shows it you know and it shows that she can like still progress and do something a little bit different but like still with that center of what makes her songwriting special i loved that oh my god uh, all these songs that's four songs in a row that i've absolutely loved so this is really stacking and like the ones at the beginning like i still really like them too this is stacking up to be a really bloody good album you're so gorgeous let's go on to song number nine this is getaway car i've heard people talk about this one so maybe this is going to be quite a good song let's go let's do it let's do it oh something's gone wrong oh white lies oh so good <gasps> ah! oh. oh my god <laughs> oh. oh 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 they were on their way it was working and then something went wrong oh <gasps> so she's definitely cheated on somebody i think she's gone away with the true love and the guy that she was with it's like chasing them down oh this is so good it's exciting you know it's this new love and they're going and they're getting away with it i can't decide whether they were doing well and something went wrong or oh <gasps> key change oh my god she turned him in. <gasps> oh my god. So she left him. Oh my god. It's so good. <laughs> I love that line. It was never gonna happen. It was never gonna go well because it was built on a lie. Maybe she hasn't met Joe yet then. <laughs> Nothing good starts in a getaway car, yeah. It was exciting for what it was, but this isn't what I want. Oh my god! <laughs> She's f genius. It's like a romance that was fated to go wrong, you know? Nothing good starts in a getaway car. Nothing good starts from a relationship that's built on cheating and built on bad foundations, you know? I think that, like, the story from Gorgeous is, like, obviously she met this person, she was with somebody else, and she must have gone in head first and they were like running away from you know like the cops and all this beautiful imagery about like the sirens in his heart and out trying to outrun the cops and trying to outrun this guy and but like nothing good starts when something is built on something so negative and she made the choice to take the money and run you know to get out of there she left him in the motel it's like it's just so good like it's just such a good song oh my god that has to be one of my favorite songs ever just because it works on like so many levels like it works like talking about her relationship but like she but at the same time she tells this story of this kind of bonnie and clyde kind of thing it's the thrill of the chase and the thrill of this of this crazy love but at the end she has that kind of third act revelation where she decides to leave him and it's just so perfect, so, so good. Okay, so let's go on to song number 10. This is King of My Heart. On her own now. Oh. <laughs> oh. Wow. You're the one I've been waiting for. Oh my God. <gasps> oh my God. Uh <laughs> I love this. I love like the maximalism, the drama, the like, this is the one I've been waiting for and I'm gonna throw my heart out there. 
This has got to be about Joe. <laughs> oh, I love that. So they're building this kingdom inside her bedroom. It's it's them, you know. Oh, this is so sick. I love it. This is so good. I'm just really happy for her. Oh, she's being fixed. The king of my heart, body and soul. Ah, oh, king of all of me. You take on all of me. This is the real thing. Our relationship isn't based on what the media think of me. I'm not like playing it up for the papers and for the cameras. This is the real thing. My heart, body and soul is there for you. <laughs> this is the one I've been, this is the one I've been waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just so good, isn't it? <laughs> oh, dearie me. It's just so beautiful. And I think that, like, up to this point, like, I feel like I've been kind of hoping for Taylor to kind of find this real love. And I know that, like, having listened to Folklore and Evermore, that, Evermore, that she's, you know, with Joe, she has found that person. But, like, to kind of witness, it feels like this is me witnessing the moment when she actually finds this person and knowing that this is it. I thought I was better off living alone. I was there, I was like, you know, I kind of come to terms with this thing, but then you kind of surprised me. You came along and did and did something that I didn't think was possible anymore. You simultaneously took me back to this childhood, beautiful, like naive romance, but at the same time, it's mature and it's real. Album is so good. I just feel like this album is so misunderstood. Do you know what I mean? Like. And it really feels like she's progressing. She's kind of managed to release all of these, like all the kind of dark feelings that she was feeling at the beginning of the album. And now she's being able to really feel herself and be herself. It really feels like, like a coming of age album. When she thought she had everything sussed out, she didn't, life happened. And now, but now she's in a place where she's confident enough and she understands her own heart. She understands the industry. Um, she's ready to actually take on a proper real romance. And this is that moment. Okay, so let's go on to the next song. Okay, this is song number 11. This is Dancing With Her Hands Tied. I love those chords. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, I love that. Putting us through our paces. Ah, oh, oh my God. Ah, oh, this would totally send me off if I was seeing her live. Just kept on dancing, you know? I think it's this like fear that the media and like her fame is gonna ruin their relationship. You know, there's still gravity towards each other. You know, it's still that romance, but they have to hide it, like the invisible locket. Yeah, the production on this album is so so good. <laughs> oh, oh, swaying as the room burned down. It kind of sounds like she's just gonna let it all happen. You know, even if the water floods in and we drown and everything's burning down, she's still there. You know, she's still in it. The world is falling down around them. It's such a beautiful picture. Oh, oh. Yeah, another really good one that. I just love the scope of it. Like it's such high highs, you know? Really, really great. Yeah. You know, maybe she's afraid that this relationship isn't gonna last because of the media attention and because of her fame, really. And they're kind of like trying to navigate it though their hands are tied. It's like kind of describing this difficulty. But in the middle eight, she really kind of reveals that she is in it for the long haul and she's gonna try and make it work because the place that he takes her when they're away from all of the media is so special. She said like the bed is an oasis and things like that. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Next, song number 12, this is Dress. Okay. So she's always sung about being in the dress, you know, crying in the white dress all the way home or whatever it was. Was that Dear John, I think? Um, and like, now she's actually got a song called The Dress. So I'm quite excited about that. Ooh, in a crowded room. They've got no idea about me and you. Huh. Oh my God. Oh, I love that. I don't want you like a best friend. <gasps> I wore the dress so you could take it off. Oh. I don't want you like a best friend. The expectation that they would be just as a best friend. Maybe this is the Carly Kloss thing, but they know nothing about us. Yeah, there's some secretive like thing going on. I love that. 
That is the key line, isn't it? I love that. I wore this dress so you could take it off. Oh. Yeah, I really relate to that. Oh. You were still there. I love it. I love this. Oh! <laughs> oh my god, that's so good. <laughs> oh my god. I wasn't ready with that. <laughs> See that line makes me think it's like make, makes me relate to, relate to it in a same sex way again another amazing song so like the thing is that up until this point I've been kind of theorizing that like she'd already met Joe at this point and that like this love songs were going to be about him but this one it doesn't seem like that you know for one of the central lines to be I don't want you like a best friend there's like an expectation that people think that they're just best friends or maybe like that's what her expectation of their relationship is supposed to be like this makes me think there's more to that theory of uh, her and Carly Kloss than I previously thought because like I really relate to that the thing is that like when I was in my early 20s I like had these very very strong feelings for somebody who was straight I relate so deeply to that to, you know that like I don't want you just like a best friend I want more than that so m maybe this is revealing to us that that she does have feelings because there were lines in there that said they think that they know us but they don't I fully expect you all to like write down in the comments let me know like what other evidence is there and um, what do you think about the song do you think it is about the same sex romance or is there another kind of explanation sound off in the comments as they say let's go to the next song this is song number 13 this is why we can't have nice things oh god something's gonna go wrong oh <laughs> oh oh champagne see she's really painting this picture oh no <laughs> very sassy <laughs> Oh, right, okay. Wow. The production is so sick. Oh, this is a friend thing. Okay, so someone stabbed her in the back. Maybe it's Katy Perry, again. This, this is sassy. Diss track. <laughs> this is a bit simpler in terms of, like, melody and stuff. Oh. God, this really is a diss track, isn't it? Jeez. So someone who's believing the the media and not believing her. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. I can't even say it with a straight face. <laughs> oh yeah. The production, again, amazing. Really clever, focuses on certain lyrics, goes really big and then goes really small, really, really cool stuff. I don't know, like, the attitude of these kind of, like, tracks where it's like, you stabbed me in the back and now this is kind of the track being like, you're a dick. Like, I don't like them as much. Like, I, I don't like the, the attitude. Still feels a little bit childish and I'm kind of, I, I think it's a little bit of a shame that she did write us on that from that perspective because I thought that, like, a lot of the rest of the album she had had been a bit more like positive. I don't know, yeah, it's not not my favorite, but yeah, let's go on to the next song. So this is song number 14. This is Call It What You Want. This seems more romantic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, she's admitting that she lost. I think this is like after the drama. Oh. Oh, that's so sweet. So after everything went to sh she's kind of re-emerged and with the love of Joe, she's managed to come back. Yeah, oh my god. Oh, oh I love that. <laughs> he loves me like I'm brand new, he's high above all the drama. He is pure and simple in love with me. Because he really knows me. Which is more than the kids can say yeah i love this <laughs> this is beautiful it feels like she's kind of come through the other side and he's healed her you know oh my god i love that so she tells a story of like it all kind of going to crap you know obviously the stuff with kim and kanye must have really really affected her and i'm sure that this was all at the same time as the scooter braun big red machine 
shit was going down. But she's kind of weathered the storm and she may have made all, the, all these mistakes. She didn't handle herself in the best way. Like she brought a knife to a gunfight. Like she wasn't prepared and she ended up wounded and she ended up like it, almost saying it defeat her. In the darkness, she managed to find Joe, presumably. <laughs> and he loves her for who she is. He doesn't pay attention to the media. He doesn't go with all the drama. He just keeps his head down all the way towards her. He flies high above all of the drama and all of the fakeness because he is in love with her and she believes it. And call it what you want, but for me, this is love. This is perfection. It's a beautiful song to have near the end of the album. It really feels like a journey, you know? It feels like at the beginning, she's kind of going through all of the, the difficulty and the drama and she's responding and she's angry and it's all those kind of raw feelings. And then as it kind of take, goes through, like she has like some kind of fling in the middle, but then eventually she meets Joe and she kind of finds something that is real. And it kind of takes her out of it, takes her out of the anger. And once all of that is kind of gone, her feelings can really mellow out and the most important feelings can come through. And it's kind of, you know, saying, call it what you want. It's, it's just like, I don't care what everybody else thinks. This is real. Love it. This is like really shaping up to be one of my favorite Taylor Swift albums. Let's go on to song number 15. This is the last song on the album. This is New Year's Day. Oh, I like the piano already. Oh. <laughs> the Polaroids. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I'll be there all times. <laughs> Stay through it, even through all the, the hard times. I'll be there. Even after the party, I'll still be there. <laughs> this is so good. I'm kind of speechless. <laughs> She's kind of hoping that it's gonna, gonna continue, you know? I don't want you to be that stranger who... I still know, you know. This is so beautiful, and I love the piano. And <gasps> evermore. <laughs> oh my god, she was teasing it even now, even then, in 2017. <laughs> and it's so different from the rest of the album. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> what can I say? Like, it's just so wonderful. And it just feels like such a journey. It's not just written for the drama and the romance and the media. This is what happened to me in my life. And this is how I made my way out of the darkness. And to have that quiet, lovely little song at the end that just, she's just proving her devotion to him. Because even with all the highs and the, you know, even like, I wanna be with you at the party, but I'll be the one who's there the next day cleaning up with you, you know? I, we have the real thing. <laughs> it's, yeah, I love how that song totally doesn't fit with the rest of the album. But like, it kind of feels like because of that, it feels like she's shed all the darkness. She's finally managed to heal from from all the horrible stuff that happened. Yeah, and, and ha having a song that, that is like sonically so intimate and close at the end of an album that is big is courageous, but like a really brilliant storytelling device because it really kind of shows where she ended up. <sighs> so that's it. That's the whole of Reputation. Just... Honestly, like, I don't want to say it, but this might be my favourite Taylor Swift album. <laughs> I'm going to have to really go through and hash it out and make a, my, like a ranking list for you. People said that I would enjoy it, but I wasn't sure because, you know, I wasn't sure it would still be, you know, my favourite because, like, there's so many other albums that of hers that I've absolutely adored. But, like, honestly, that was just so good. It had everything. Like, it had the heights of the drama, and, but then it really told such a cohesive story the whole way through. And I love an album that does that. Okay, well, there we go. Thank you so much for tuning in all the way. Make sure to like and subscribe, but also, yeah, make sure to leave a comment 
let me know what the real context is. Let me know what the real story is because that's something I don't necessarily pick up all of it. And also I wanna know all the little details, all the lyrics I missed. So before we finish the video, let's go on to my song of the week. So this week I'm choosing a song from Clean Bandit. They've had a few massive hits like Symphony and everything. But one of my favorite songs of theirs was actually quite an early one. And this is Extraordinary Feet Shana Bass. I think it was released as a single, but it's not as widely known as a lot of their other songs. Their first album, New Eyes, is so unique. It's that classical house mashup that they do so well that I feel like they've lost a bit of in their later stuff. So yeah, so go back and check that out. It's such a beautiful song. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to the end. Make sure to tune in every single Friday for a new reaction. Bye.